All right, so this is the grass asset. Um, it's like really actually super cool. So basically how it works is like we render multiple layers of grass as like a shell extruded on top of the base mesh. So here we have like a landscape base mesh and um, each layer is like textured um, like progressively uh, as like a more and more grassy layer basically. Um, and we extrude back into the layer using different types of noise. Um, but it lets you get this really awesome, like super fuzzy, really cool looking grass effect. And you can see how the special lighting algorithms that we have like really shine through. Like when you're aiming at the sun, you can really see this like lighting of this lighting effect showing up. And then when you're looking straight down, you can really see how the lighting is our custom lighting model is, is really giving this grass a super unique look. Um, so <clears throat> I wanted to quickly step in and show, uh, how to use this grass with, um, the interactivity effects that we've set up. So basically, I'm just going to walk through how the interactivity works, uh, what you have to do to set it up, and show some examples. So um, here, basically, like at a high level, the grass interactivity works by uh, using an orthogra orthographic camera um, that looks straight down. And then um, we sample the data from that orthographic camera in order to tell the grass whether it should be cut, whether it should be erased, or whether it should be tinted. Um, and so I've set up an example here of different uh, materials. I think this should all be set up. So here we have a tint, um, and that's using a blue color. So the blue color um, material will tint the grass. So you can see here um, it's not working when you bring it too far over to the right. So I'll explain why in just a second. Um, but you can see when we bring it over here, it's tinting the ground. So you can use this particle system. Um, or any other transparent mesh that is rendering on a specific layer that you set um, in order to tint the ground. You can also remove the grass using this remove layer. Make it smaller so you can see. So if I zoom in here, you can see that these particles are completely removing the grass where they show up. Um, maybe I'll make them a little bit bigger, three or four, and then we can move this around. So you can see when you're moving it around, it's basically completely removing the grass in places where the uh, particle is appearing. We can um, adjust the emission of the particles so that they are more present, which will cause the grass to be removed more consistently. And we can change the shape of the emission as well. So these are just standard particle system features, right? And then you can also cut the grass. So let me hide these two. You can also cut the grass. So let me bring this down. Uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller. Five, ten. So cutting the grass is denoted using a green material. And you can, maybe it'll be easier if I bring this down a little bit. Um, Bring up the rate and adjust the shape. So you can see here that the grass is being cut. So it's not being completely removed, but it is being cut. <coughs> um, so you can use the tint to simulate something like a blood splatter. Where do we put that? Just here. Play. So you can use that to simulate something like a blood splatter or um, something else. Um, you can use the remove to simulate someone cutting the grass, completely cutting it or burning it away. Um, and you can use the cut to simulate a character cutting the grass or walking on top of the grass, something like that. So. Um, so far, what you've seen is that, you know, the tint and the cut sort of have fixed settings that are associated with them. So you can see the tint here is red, um, but you might not always want it to be red. So you can customize the effect, uh, the color effect, using the settings that are present in the grass material. So here we have this landscape, right? And it has the grass material applied to it. So then we'll go in here and we need to customize the grass tint color. So if we set it to something like blue, um, 
you can see that it'll tint the grass to that blue color um, or white. Bring up the emission. You can see that we can leave bright spots on the ground or tint it any color that we want. You can also tint it black. Um, so that's tinting. Um, basically, like you can tint using a tint particle system, and then you can control the tint using the grass material. For cut, you can see that there's also sort of like a fixed amount here that's happening, right? So we're cutting away a certain amount of the grass. And you can customize the amount of grass that we cut away in from the interactivity section of the material editor. So you're going to want to set this to one if you want to cut the grass away completely. Uh, obviously, if you do that, then it functions the same as remove, though. So I wouldn't recommend doing that, but instead recommend doing something slightly less, like 0.5. That lets you simulate um, you know, a partial grass removal. So in terms of setting this up, you can see here that we have these particles and that they're on a particular layer, transparent FX. And the way that we're sampling data from that layer is with our interactivity camera. So this is included as a prefab. <clears throat> this is included as a prefab, um, but you can set it up yourself as well. You can control the size of the orthographic camera view as well as the clip planes to make sure that you can you know, easily see the content that you're trying to include in your tinting or cutting process. So if we enable this one again, you can see that the area which we can cover is much larger now. Okay, and that's settings that you can customize from your orthographic camera view. Now, if you look up here at the camera preview, you can see what's actually happening, is that we're sampling the data from the transparent FX layer, and we're applying it um, as part of the interactivity camera results, and then we sample that texture from our grass. Um, our interactivity camera only samples from the layer that you'll specify in the culling mask. So make sure to set you know, the particles to appear on that layer, and then in your gameplay camera, you want to make sure to uncheck the transparent FX culling mask so that you're not showing it there anymore. Obviously, you can use whatever layer you want um, or whatever layer name you want. Uh, it's also important to know that you know the background color should be set to black typically, but you can change it to whatever you want. And if you change it to red, then it'll you know fully uh, cut the grass. If you set it to green, it'll fully press the grass down. So partial cut. And then if you set it to blue, it'll fully tint the grass. So I recommend setting it to black, um, but be aware that you can customize that as well. <clears throat> also make sure that the interactivity map here, um, that you have a render texture present there um, for the material to print to. And then also, you need to make sure that you have a grass interactivity renderer script on it. Um, you can add a target and a target offset if you want to follow a particular character. Uh, our script will automatically handle character movement or camera movement. And um, that will take care of making sure that you know this texture is correctly associated with the grass in your scene. So uh, that's the interactivity system for our grass shader. Uh, as you can see, it's really powerful and it gives you a lot of flexibility and customizability with how you want your grass to appear in game. And it allows you to integrate your grass into your scene in a more powerful way uh, by letting the grass uh, really become a part of the scene with blood splatter, cut effects, other things like that. Looking forward to seeing what you guys are able to make with it. Thanks for watching.